Are you living the Delaware Beach lifestyle? You can't live at the beach and do nothing. This up and coming year round area has lots to offer. Find out where to eat, play and serve. Living the ultimate dream. Hey guys, today we have Dr. Shereen Howitt on the show. I am really excited to talk about this topic of sleep because sleep has been one of the most important things I've learned to pay attention to. And uh, when you're missing sleep or you're, you know, you're not sleeping very well, um, you don't allow your body to go into that REM uh, sleep pattern where your mind and body are able to heal <clears throat> itself and um, have better concentration and focus throughout your day. And I've just recently learned how important sleep is and good sleep for that matter. And having a specialist and someone that knows what they're talking about here, your lifestyle or you know, what you're doing in your life um, is the best way to improve and increase your sleep um, the most efficient way possible. Uh, we can go years without having just uh, with just a, a short um, conversation with somebody that knows what they're talking about and that knows what questions to ask can drastically change your entire life. And if you're coming from a high stress situation like Las Vegas, like I did, um, going to a lower, lower, slower paced area, uh, you're going to realize how important sleep can be messed up and it creeps up on you. So just uh, a night here and there, staying up a little bit later, getting up a little bit later. And then all of a sudden, a month later, you find yourself staying up till three o'clock in the morning and you just cannot get back to your regular sleep patterns. This is the best way to change that. All right, guys, enough of me rambling on. Let's have uh, Dr. Howitt uh, tell us a little bit about the Pearl Sleep Clinic. And uh, here we go. Uh, welcome to the 302 Lifestyle. All right, welcome to the 302 Lifestyle Beach Podcast. Uh, we have an interesting topic today about sleep. And uh, Ms. Howitt here at the Pearl Clinic uh, deals with uh, sleep, right? So tell us a little Pretty bit much. about what you do and um yeah so I mean I um after I did my internal medicine residency so we ended up going into sleep medicine which is a field that um in medical school you didn't really learn a whole lot about which I kind of thought was interesting it was definitely one of the um newer fields in medicine but really wasn't as heavily um discussed or taught or or brought up um, and so I was lucky enough that during my residency, um, I had a great mentor um, who invited me to come, you know, see his sleep apnea patients, which was all really a new topic and a new idea for me. Um, but that's really where the spark hit me, I guess, uh, just the interest in the science behind it, the fascination in how much it can affect and influence your health and your life and just really every aspect. Um, and so, you know, one uh, graduating and all of that happened, um, it was definitely a field that I wanted to continue to pursue um, because the influence that it can have on people's health and safety, as well as improvement on quality of life, is really one of the most probably awesome things that I get to do in the field of medicine. Um, so it's really rewarding on that front um, that you can make such an impact and such a difference for people's lives. Oh, I love that. And yeah, so I started having a few little health issues going on, um, it's particularly around stress and anxiety mm -hmm. and dealing with stuff like that. And one of the big topics was my sleep. How was I yep. sleeping? Yeah. And when I started really looking at it, I was getting up multiple times a night. I wasn't hitting that, what is it, REM? REM sleep. Yep, REM that sleep. deep, restful sleep. Sure. So I can see how this could spark an interest in someone because it evolves. I mean, this is like half our life we're talking about. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you spend so much time sleeping. If you really look at it, pretty much what you said, half your life, you're awake doing stuff. And the mm -hmm. other half, you're supposed to be sleeping. You're supposed to be resting, recovering, recuperating. Um, but unfortunately, that's not what ends up happening for mm -hmm. a lot of people um, in the population, um, whether it's because of insomnia related to other issues, um, which, like you said, stress and anxiety, especially with everything that's gone on this past year, has been a huge hot topic. Um, and it's impacted a lot of people's lives who, even if they weren't having too much difficulty prior, um, I've definitely had a lot more patients coming in, being more aware that their sleep has gotten worse, the quality and the quantity has definitely deteriorated for one reason 
other. Um, and so for me, it ends up being, a, you know, a little bit of a, uh, you know, private eye investigator about it, trying to figure out, you know, what's the root cause of what's causing this problem. And that's kind of something that I tend to convey to patients a lot is you got to go for the root of what's causing it. Because if you try to just cover it up, mm -hmm. it's like putting a bandaid on a broken bone. You're trying to cover up the sign of it, but you're not really fixing what the problem is. And it's always going to be there unless you address it. So in my training, that was a big thing that they stressed and emphasized on was really figuring out the root of what was causing it and work on fixing that because that will then inherently improve everything else that comes afterwards. Now, I'm a veteran. So the number one thing that they went to when I started coming with like these over, overall issues going on and, you know, you have symptoms of like no yeah. sleep and all this stuff. But the number one thing they would start doing is just prescribing medicine. Yeah. And so yeah. all of a sudden, you know, I'm like a couple of weeks in, I'm taking this stuff. It's making me like sleepwalk, and all this mm -hmm. stuff going on. But you're yeah. saying what I do is I'm like a, you're like a private eye and you kind of like start looking at, okay, mm -hmm. I see you don't have any sleep, but let's dive a little deeper. And it looks like you guys right. do nutrition and all kinds of stuff. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I'm lucky enough to work with, um, first of all, fantastic staff. I mean, I just, I can't sing their praises enough because if they weren't as fantastic at doing what they do, then that would not allow me to do what I need to do. Um, so it has to be a team approach. And I am really blessed to have some fantastic ladies that I get the opportunity to work with. Um, but I also have two uh, nurse practitioners that have been working with me as well. Um, Rhonda Davis uh, was a uh, is a registered dietitian dietitian and nutritionist. So she still works with a lot of patients about, you know, learning about the kinds of foods that you eat, what would be healthier options? How can you lose weight safely, but effectively? Um, you know, and it's a very similar perspective of you can't just follow a diet, you have to change your lifestyle. And it's the same idea, you have to investigate what are the habits, the behaviors, the things that people are doing that seem to be working against their goal and then changing that with something healthier and more positive and helping that be the lifestyle they continue, not just a you know temporary diet or a routine that they follow for a month or three months and then they go back to normal um you know so that's definitely something that she you know uh can bring to the table in addition um to the primary care that we do which you know we we handle adults and you know we definitely have been getting a lot more new primary care patients as well as new sleep referrals um you know so we're really lucky that we've been busy and and we've got a great you know patient population down here but by the same token, because of the population we have down here, there's that much more need for primary care, as well as obviously making sure that things are covered in terms of a sleep medicine perspective, too. Okay. Now, um, so, uh, doctor, if and it is doctor, right? Yes, yes. Okay. So I said miss earlier. I'm like, wait a minute, doctor. Duh. That's okay. Sorry about That's that. okay. Um, so here I am, someone's here listening, and this is actually a huge uh, thing to, about living in the 302 area. So as you know, yep. you have all these big cities surrounding a uh, little 302 beach, yep. and all these people are coming from high stress, high intense uh, lifestyles, and then they come here to the beach and they think, oh, yep. everything's just going to be really great. Uh, yeah. So what's some of the number one things that someone can do um, if they're having uh, problems? Well, number one thing would be to contact you. <laughs> so. <laughs> How do they get a hold of you guys? And what are some of the first steps that you would recommend for someone to do? Sure. Um, well, if anybody needs to get a hold of us, um, we do have a website which has a contact us form, a referral form. Um, I also include some downloadable content that just has some sleep hygiene uh, tips for patients, as well as a sleep diary uh, for people who like to kind of keep track and chart their progress and see how they're doing. And, um, you know, with a diary, it ends up also being really helpful because sometimes when you take a step back, you can see a much clearer picture picture and pattern than when you're kind of in the middle of the mill going through it, you know, you know, day by day. Um, so they can either get a hold of us at uh, www.pearlclinicllc.com um, or they can obviously always call us at the office. The number is 302-648-2099. And our general, uh, you know, email address that comes to us is actually hello at pearlclinicllc.com. So patients have multiple ways that they can easily, um, you know, get through to us, send us a message, get a hold of us if they'd like to, you know, schedule appointment, get any uh, insurance information. But 
you know, we're pretty much in network with just about every insurance that's around here. So, you know, that makes it really easy that people don't have to necessarily worry about in network versus out of network with our practice. All right. And we're going to put all those links down below, guys. So if you're having trouble sleeping or you know someone that is uh, definitely yep. uh, the place to check out. So yep. um, here I am. I'm, I'm in the 302 area and I'm having some trouble sleeping. Mm -hmm. What are some of your go to uh, things that you could sure. tell someone to try out first? And absolutely. Uh, OK, let's start with that. So, I mean, some of the, you know, sleep hygiene things that we recommend, because, you know, we're used to talking about other forms of hygiene, um, but sleep has its own, you know, uh, recommendations and things that people can be mindful of that can absolutely impact what we do. Um, one of the big things, especially for patients who have difficulty in terms of insomnia, having a regular schedule that you follow actually ends up being very, very beneficial. And, you know, like you mentioned, people retire and come to the beach. And when you've been, you know, following the same work routine for 30 years and you went to bed around the same time because you had to wake up to go to work at the same time. And all of a sudden that routine and that schedule, again, rightfully can get thrown out the window because you've earned it and deserved it if you've retired. But for some people that ends up being the onset for their insomnia because they've taken themselves out of a routine that they've been in for decades you can't be surprised that maybe your body doesn't adjust as nicely as, you know, your yeah. attitude might like it to. Um, so that is one of the things that, you know, you definitely have to be mindful of is when you're going to bed, when you're waking up. Um, another thing that can impact sleep is, of course, what you're doing leading up to bed. Obviously, anybody who deals with a lot of stress, anxiety, you know, uh, or is on you know technology a lot in terms of social media, watching TV, being on the computer, again, what we do in society definitely has a huge impact on our sleep. And the more that you've got feeding you, the more that's keeping you awake and, and keeping you engaged is obviously going to take away from that feeling of being tired and wanting to go to sleep. So definitely having an earlier cutoff where you kind of stop interacting with technology to that extent and give yourself time to wind down, time to relax, you know, time to really settle um, can also be another helpful strategy for some people. Again, especially if they tend to feel really anxious or they have a lot of stress in their life, you really want to try to put some time aside to let you unwind and to kind of get things off of your chest, get things off of your mind so that when you are ready to go to bed, you're not bringing all of that back in with you. You're kind of done dealing with it earlier in your day. Day and it can kind of, you know, stay out there in a, in a sense. Um, you know, so those are a lot of just typical things, um, you know, in terms of consumables, you know, tobacco, alcohol, caffeine, you know, we still recommend avoiding that within five to six hours of going to bed. Um, you know, do those things affect everybody? Obviously, the answer is no, everyone is different. But some people are sensitive to those chemicals. And as the body breaks it down and metabolizes it, those chemicals can still sometimes have a stimulating effect on your brainwave activity. And that's the opposite of what you want when you're trying to go to sleep. So just changing timings of those kinds of habits can also sometimes have a positive impact on people's ability to, you know, fall asleep. Oh, I love all that. Very good information. So what it sounds like is like, look, you're, you're doing the same routine for sometimes decades. Yeah. You know, don't feel so bad that all of a sudden you're having a hard time sleeping. Let's take mm -hmm. a look at what you're doing before you go to bed. Yep. Uh, that's your first go to. And then if I'm coming to you guys and I just want someone that is knowledgeable, you've been doing this for 10 years. Yep. Um, what, what can I expect as when I come in, I go to your website, I, I start the process, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I do some intake information. What yep. does it normally look like from the time I come in from the time we start seeing some progress? Well, I mean, it really obviously depends on what's causing the problem. You know, is it something simple and straightforward as just, you know, behavioral scheduling changes that we need to work on? You know, is there other components like other medical problems that could also be affecting that? Um, because again, that's another thing that I kind of have to get into a conversation with patients to figure out, you know, if you've got a history of, let's say, diabetes and your blood sugars haven't really been well controlled, well, then it's not a surprise that maybe you'd be 
not feeling as well or, or you know, sleepy during the day or not feeling well rested overnight. So again, it's still a lot of investigation to rule out what else could be negatively impacting you and dealing with all of that appropriately. And then focusing on what we can change, what we do have control over. Because um, obviously one of the biggest things in the older patient population is that there are certain medications they have to be on for you know other medical problems. But by the same token, some of the side effects of those medications can either have a positive or negative impact on sleep. So if we end up kind of going through our investigation and finding that, you know, that really seems to be the uh, big problem that we're having to fight against, you know, we might have to try and find strategies of either working around it um, or doing the best that we can, knowing that that is not something that we can change or that we can alter. Um, you know, so again, it's a lot of figuring out what is an active problem that's affecting you and what is not really an issue. And we can kind of push that off to the side. Um, and of course, if we're even considering the possibility of sleep apnea, then we really should test and treat someone for sleep apnea first, because oftentimes if the insomnia really is linked to the presence of sleep apnea, then by treating one, you actually end up treating the other at the same time. But if there isn't a medical justification to to do the sleep study for sleep apnea, then that obviously is not something that I would prescribe or order for a patient. If it seems like it is a pure insomnia issue, and I really don't have any suspicion or concern that there's anything else working in the background, um, then, you know, we do start by talking about the sleep hygiene recommendations and trying to make sure that you're able mm. to stay in line with that. Um, another thing that really works is trying to reset your sleep cycle, because some people have kind of gotten so far gone that, yeah. you know, they're not falling asleep until 3, 4 a.m. And then they don't want to sleep until 12 noon because they feel like they've slept <laughs> their day away. You know, so in instances like that, we work on sleep training and scheduling where we, you know, limit the hours that they sleep to basically build up a sleep debt so that we can use it to influence when you go to sleep and to reinforce to the brain, this is time for sleep because we do the same thing at the same time every single night and we wake up at the same time every single night. And usually if you can get by those first it's about three to four nights where it's going to kind of be a little ugly. And I'm always upfront and honest with patients. I was like, look, your first three or four <laughs> nights are going to suck. You might hate me. You might go, what am I doing this for? This seems really crazy. But if they can get past those first couple of nights, the brain really does adjust very well and realize, oh, oh it's 11 o'clock. You want me asleep at 11 because, you know, come, come 5 a.m. I'm awake whether I like it or not. So, you know, might as well get to sleep now and I'm good to go for a few hours. And that usually takes about two weeks to kind of reset that cycle within yourself. And then what I do with patients is we keep adding more blocks of sleep time until they come and go, you know what? I fall asleep when I want to. I stay asleep through the night and I wake up feeling good. That's when I'm done. My job is done. Here's the schedule that worked for you. Here's the behaviors that as long as you stick with, there really shouldn't be any further problems in you being able to go to sleep and stay asleep. And of course, if we test them for sleep apnea and they have that, then we need to talk about what treatment options we can offer to them for the sleep apnea. And then of course, monitor afterwards to make sure that they really were successful at controlling what we needed to have happen. Oh, love all that. So um, it sounds like if I'm having trouble sleeping, instead of just going, oh, I need something to help me sleep, it sounds mm. like I would rather have a specialized team that knows what to look for, what to do, yeah. how to set up these patterns, routines, and uh, yeah. new systems yeah. to be able to sleep better. And then with more sleep comes a lifestyle change of mm -hmm. um, I actually am awake during the day. I, I'm more clear. I'm, uh, yep. My health is probably improving, and all these things are just stemming from having better sleep. Oh, absolutely. Because, you know, with, with a bad night's sleep, it affects blood pressure, it affects heart rate, it affects blood mm -hmm. sugar, it of course affects your mental clarity and your ability to focus. Um, it can affect your mood without a doubt, um, you know, and it also affects your metabolism. And that's, of course, something that a lot of Americans struggle with, you know, not being able to lose weight, trying really hard, you know, feeling almost dejected when they're trying and making an effort and they're not seeing any benefit or any worth in 
what they did. And that can definitely be very hard for people to deal with um, and very hard to accept. Um, but again, we know that having untreated sleep apnea is something that does work against that for people's health. So, you know, there's, there's so many good reasons to get a good night's sleep, because like you'd imagine, everything in our body is connected. It's not like your heart is really independent of your lungs is, you know, independent from your brain. So it's not that far of a stretch to imagine that if you're not getting the rest and the recovery that you need, then everything else that goes along with that wouldn't really feel as well either, or you wouldn't be as efficient at doing what your body could do under different circumstances. You know, so sleep is, is golden, you know, it's definitely yeah. worth its weight in gold because, you know, if you get a bad night's sleep, that translates to everything. And that just continues to be an additive issue. But if you can give your body the rest that it needs, then your body can deliver on what you need out of it in return. Makes sense. So if anybody's listening, it sounds like sleep should be uh, right up there with nutrition. I mean, this is probably yeah. what you eat and how you sleep is probably determining how your life is right now. Oh, absolutely. So, like I said, everything is interconnected. Yeah. You can't look at things through a keyhole and go, well, I'm not going to worry about all the rest of this. I'm only looking at that. Um, because again, that's not how our, you know, we're not computers in that sense that it, you know, I can just deal with one part and ignore the rest. Everything impacts everything else. And that's why, you know, part of the osteopathic philosophy is to look at the body as a whole, as a sum of the parts, not just look at parts alone and ignore the big picture. Um, so that's a philosophy that, you know, I, I agreed with before I went to school, going through school, I was like, yeah, this totally makes sense. There's a logic behind that. Um, and, you know, that's part of, in my opinion, you know, the art of practicing medicine. And that's how I practice the art of medicine is looking at the person as a whole, trying to figure out what parts are causing problems, and then focusing on working on those, and then always taking a step back and looking at the big picture again, going, did we accomplish what we needed or is there still work that needs mm. to be done now going through all this uh, you have a family of your own and by uh, living here in the 302 area we got all these people moving here um, yep. some people have been here their whole lives and just listening in what are some of your favorite spots as someone who uh, loves sleep uh, oh. what are some of your favorite spots with your family that you love to go in the 302 I mean, honestly, my, um, I mean, I think my kids were fish in a different lifetime because oh they God. love the ocean. They love being in the water. I mean, it's just, um, you know, it's, it's almost like in their blood. Um, so the beach is definitely a huge, you know, up there on our list of things to do as a family. Um, you know, my husband who, who was actually born and raised here, which is how I ended up coming here from New York. It's really because of him. Um, but, you know, he grew up in the ocean. He grew up surfing and bodyboarding. So that was something that was just such a huge part of his life. Um, so, of course, when we had kids, it was a big part of all of our lives. So, you know, everyone gets their bodyboard. Everyone's got their fins. And, you know, off we go to try and, you know, catch a wave, which, you know, we're not always the greatest around here. I have to admit that. I get that. But, um, at least for the kids to start, it, it works out pretty good. You know, they Love can it. they can at least skim near the shore, you know, catch a couple of waves before they, uh, you know, they tumble. But, um, you know, the beach and the ocean for me is something that I've always gravitated towards, even as a kid. And I've always felt just comfortable and very calm and serene and relaxed in that kind of environment. Um, so that's definitely something big that we tend to kind of... Um, that we tend to kind of do a lot as a, as a family and, you know, just going on hikes and, you know, bike rides, which luckily there's a lot of trails around here, which I think for us was one of the big saving graces during COVID is that we could still, you know, get on a trail, be away from a lot of people, but that still allowed us to get out of the house, still get fresh air and exercise, um, but still feel comfortable being able to do that with the kids being as young as they are as well too. So, um, you know, that's, that's, kind of pretty much what we do. Lots of skateboarding, rollerblading, um, bike riding, you know, the kids love doing all of those active things, but if there's a body of water around, I mean, it can be 40 <laughs> degrees and my kids are still jumping in the water. So that's, uh, that's definitely a, a big gravitational pull for us. Well, they, they always say, uh, well, they may not say this, but I said this, um, if you want to ruin your vacation spot, move there. So <laughs> Uh, a lot of people True. move here and then they forget to go to the beach and then it's yeah. like, go to the beach. 
<laughs> well, you know, I admit we tend to go to the beach during off hours when it's yes. less crowded or, you know, when it's not as touristy. So yeah. to that extent, you're right. You know, living here, we have gone less in certain situations just because of everybody else coming at the same time. Um, but it, it is still something that we can still um, take advantage of. And, you know, luckily they have um, spring suits and winter suits that, you know, we can still keep ourselves warm, even if the water <laughs> isn't the greatest, but it still allows us to still get out there and and have fun um and maybe not freeze quite as quickly it was as freezing we would cold. I went for the first time like last weekend and it was so cold like literally yeah. it felt like yeah. i was swimming in ice oh my god oh yeah we were out there last weekend and my kids were just Waves jumping were in and flopping flopping about and like i said until i put my <laughs> full suit on and then i was like all right i feel okay i can survive out here but <laughs> yeah. um it that initial shock i mean it took my breath away it it yeah. definitely was like ice <laughs> so all right guys so um doctor this has been really great uh you've definitely made me kind of look at uh, my sleep patterns and um, we want to check out pearlclinicllc.com and get started on the journey of a better sleep. And uh, doctor, uh, let's get a uh, lightning round here. So what is your favorite book, tool, software, or video, or just something that has influenced your life in a, an impactful way that someone can check out? That's honestly, that's a really good question. Um, there was actually a book and my best friend will tell you um, because it's something that has been integral in all of our lives. And it's one of those things that when some things happen in your life, you go, I gravitate towards that book. Um, and that's The Alchemist. Um, it has yeah. been one of my absolute favorite, favorite books. Um, and a friend of mine in med school, when I was going through a tough time in my life and you know, I would have to say probably feeling a bit lost um, and definitely kind of confused going, you know, where do I fit into all this? Where, what do I do? How do I know I'm doing the right thing? Um, that was a book that he shared with me. Um, hmm. And I have to say, reading it and going through it, it really changed my perspective and kind of opened up my idea of being able to see what's going on around me. Um, you know, looking at signs, seeing, you know, like, like we were saying earlier, you know, is the universe trying to tell me something? Am I kind of being okay. pointed or hinted at something? You know, should I stop and take a moment and just like reevaluate where I am? Um, and I found myself kind of referring back to that book quite a bit in my life when, when certain decisions or things came up, you know, I definitely kind of retreated back to lessons and things that I learned going through that book. Um, so it was really, it was something that was very important to me. And it was something that definitely spoke to me on a really deep level. Um, and by the same token, you know, when my best friend was, was going through a tough time in her life, and she also kind of felt like she was at a crossroads, um, I, you know, Amazon that book over to her. Um, and, you know, she definitely had the same reaction and really kind of grasped the same concepts. And it's definitely been one of those things that we've both ended up sharing with other people in our lives at certain moments and situations that they found themselves. Um, it just, it really, it spoke to us. Um, and, and so far it's really kind of spoken to a lot of the people that we've shared it with. So if anybody's interested in a relatively easy read, but maybe on a bigger spiritual undertone, so to speak, that you don't expect to be there. Um, I would definitely check it out because it, it's an amazing book. All right. Now, The Alchemist, that, that's not the first time I've heard about it. Who Who is it that wrote that book? Um, um, it's, um, I'm probably going to butcher his name, so I'm going to apologize yeah. right now. <laughs> um, it's Paolo Coelho, I believe is how it's pronounced. Um, yeah, he, uh... he's, he's, he's amazing. I mean, that's, that's all I can say is that book just really, really pointed me, you know, gave me a North star when I kind of really felt like I didn't have one. Um, and, and it's definitely something that I refer back to um, so much so that my husband actually bought me the audio book so I can just have <laughs> it playing in the car some mornings when I'm driving into work. And it's just kind of nice to be able to touch base with it again. Yeah. Love it. And it sounds like um, for anyone out there that if you are struggling or something's going on, I think in general, if you just reach out or mm -hmm. um, you turn to asking uh, bigger questions, you know, yeah. you tend to find the answers and books like Al The Alchemist and um, other people in your life. So really great yep. stuff. Absolutely. Uh, Dr. Howard. Okay. What, uh, what is one question I should have asked you <laughs> and what's your answer? <laughs> wow. Um, 
maybe do I miss New York? <laughs> um, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> you know, be, being a uh, New Yorker, at least once my family moved to the United States, um, you know, that was a big transition, I would say. And, and even talking to other people who are thinking about moving down here, like you mentioned, coming from bigger cities, you know, one of the things I would definitely tell people is make sure you do your homework. You know, because people have this idea of where they're going to retire to and all the things that they can do and can have. Um, but, you know, I've spoken to a lot of patients that almost seem like they really weren't prepared for that decision. You know, they realized, you know, I need a whole bunch of other doctors and specialists and, you know, there aren't too many of them down here. And it's like, well, that's definitely something you want to keep in mind, because if there are certain resources or medical care or other things that you absolutely require or, you know, it's something you're going to need, then you definitely want to do your homework and make sure that where you're looking to go can yeah. meet those expectations and, and that you're going to be okay um, with that change. You know, for me, I was a bit done with the hustle and bustle of New York. I was, I was kind of done. I did that phase of my life. You know, I did the city life. I did all of that kind of stuff. Um, and, and when my husband and I ended up, you know, initially getting together, I was ready for a change of pace. I was ready for a change of location. Um, you know, but it definitely wasn't, me moving down here feeling like I had to, or that he wasn't giving me a choice. You know, if I wanted to move to California, he was like, sign me up, I'll pack up and off we go. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but there was so much more that drew us down here and looking into the future and possibly having kids down the line. Um, that was something that we were also thinking about is what environment would we want to have a family? Where would we want to start a family? Where do we mm -hmm. feel comfortable? Where would we feel safe? Um, and, you know, Delaware just kind of fit the bill for what we were looking for as a couple. Um, not to say that I don't miss certain aspects of New York, because I do, of course. Um, but, you know, this is this is definitely where I was meant to be. And this is definitely where I was meant to have my family. So, you know, I, I can't really complain. Isn't that funny? So we came from Las Vegas and oh, wow. we came out that's here, a big change. We were like. OK, you know, we're, we're going to miss our restaurants and all these things. And then, oh, yeah, <laughs> you know, the first winter happens, you know, when everything kind of like windows Shuts down, down. Like 10 years ago. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So you came down here yeah. about the same time I did, because yeah. I moved down in uh, 2010 <laughs> when I finished my res my uh, actually it was yeah. my critical care fellowship. And I moved down here that summer. So back then, winter was winter. There was like oh, no yeah. cars. <laughs> yep. So Yep. And it's changed a little bit since then. I think it's becoming more of a year round uh, area with yeah. better doctors and more people are starting to come here. Mm -hmm. um, but it still has that small town feel and um, sleep is definitely important for that. So yep. uh, doctor, I am just so thankful that you were able to make it here today. I know we had some, uh, uh, that, that's okay. Together. We so, persevered. That's all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> This has been really good. And guys, I know that there's a lot of sleep stuff going on, especially with a lot of customers that uh, I've seen um, sleep and stress management and time management. I think yeah. as I'm growing older is I'm realizing is one of the most important things that I'm going to learn in my life yeah, is that's how key. to manage my time. That's the only thing you can't get back. So yes. you might want to have some backup and some support on helping you manage your time, which is you guys. So, Absolutely. Um, Definitely check out. Uh, we're going to put all the links down below, guys. Start this journey to help your sleep. And uh, Dr. Howard, I'm so thankful for you uh, making it here today. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate your time. And I hope the listeners are able to get something out of it. And of course, if I can be of further assistance, please let me know. I'd be glad to help. All right, guys. Keep living the 302 lifestyle. Give some better sleep. And uh, in the meantime, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Sounds great. Thanks. Bye. Have you heard of float therapy? Holy cow, this is like the biggest secret in America. <laughs> I think the world. Famous people, athletes, all these people are doing f float therapy. And it's called Urban Float in Rehoboth. You can go to urbanfloat.com, uh, click on Rehoboth, and check out these guys. You're basically sitting on 1,200 pounds of Epsom salt. Everything just feels so amazing. And you're on this weightless de-stressing um, pod for an hour. I love it. You get a discount uh, your first time. You can also uh, let them know that you're from 302 Lifestyle. Check them out, guys. Sponsored by Urban Float. Wish you could spend more time having fun and less time with chores? Go to 302beachtalk.com to get $20 off a home cleaning. 
you'll be entered to win a completely free cleaning. Eat, play, serve. Sponsored by That Guy with a Broom.